for his three transgressions. He said, O oh Lord, you are far blessed. But I have thought of you in my meditation as endo with form. This is one of the transgressions. Then, you are beyond speech, but I have sung your hymns. You are the all-pervading spirit, but I have made pilgrimage to, us, to sacred places. Be gracious, O Lord, and forgive these three transgressions of me. Shiravna said, God has formed, yes. God is formed as two, yes. Further, he is beyond both form and formlessness. No one can No one can limit him. See how nicely she puts forth the points. Another illustration he gives. Once a person went into a wood and saw a beautiful creature on a tree. <clears throat> Later he told a friend about the creature and said, Brother, on a certain tree in the wood, I saw a creature colored red. The friend answered, Oh, I have also seen it. But why do you call it as red? It is green. <laughs> and another for a third person. He said, Oh, no, 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 no. Why do you call it green, red and so on? It is yellow. <laughs> Then other persons began to describe the animal as, as uh, having different colors as violet, blue, black and so on. So, quite a good stuff for quarreling. <laughs> so they began to quarrel. About which is true, which color is true. They want to decide upon it. So, they went to the tree where that creature was living. And there was a person who was sitting under the tree. And these fellows, they approached him and asked him, well, well, there is a creature here. We are seeing you every day coming and sitting under this tree and seeing that creature. Will you please tell me what is the color of that creature? We want to settle the matter. He said, Oh, I know that creature very well. What each of you have said about the color of the creature, they are all true. Sometimes it is red, sometimes it is green, sometimes it is yellow, sometimes it is blue, sometimes it is purple. Again, sometimes I see it has no color at all. So, it changes color. It has color, at the same time there is no color. That's the conclusion. So one who constantly thinks of God can know his real nature. He alone knows that God reveals himself in different forms and different ways that he has attributes. He has attributes and, then, and again he has no attributes. Only the person who lives under the tree knows that the chameleon can assume various colors and sometimes it remains colorless. Others, not knowing the whole truth, they quarrel among themselves and they unnecessarily, they disturb their mind, they disturb the peace of mind and they suffer. What to do? So like that. <coughs> So, Sri Ramakrishna accepts both aspects of God. <coughs> People compare bhakti, love of God, 
to the cooling light of the moon and jnana knowledge to the burning rays of the sun. Sri Ramana said, I have heard that there are oceans in the extreme north and extreme south where the air is so cold that it freezes the water into huge blocks of ice here and there. Ships cannot move there. They are stopped by the ice. The doctor was there. He said, then the path of bhakti, the aspirant meets with obstacles. Sri Ramakrishna said, yes, that's true. But it does not cause the devotee any harm. After all, it is the water of the ocean of Brahman. Existence now is this absolute. That is frozen into ice. It will not injure you if you continue to reason, saying, for instance, that Brahman alone is real and the world is illusory. This reasoning will awaken in you jnana, knowledge, which like the sun will melt the ice of divine forms back into the infinite ocean of Brahman existence, not this absolute. In the Samadhi, that comes at the end of reasoning and discrimination. No such thing as I exists. But it is extremely difficult to attain. I consciousness lingers so persistently. That's why man is born again and again in this world. As long as you maintain your ego, anka, you have to keep coming back and forth. A question may be asked, where is the need for faith? Cannot man use his intellect and know things? No. Because of the limitations of the mental process, antakkarna, he is filled with uh, because of the limitations of the mental process, Great people, both in the East and the West, after having experienced the highest, have stressed the need for faith. And they could not have made a misstatement, for they had no purpose to do so. In all our experiences of external objects, there is a person who experiences Then the process of experience and then object experienced. The three factors are there. Without these triune factors, one cannot alive, one cannot live. Every moment of one's life, they are present. These triple factors have to be annihilated for attaining the supreme experience. It's called Triputi Laya that has to be achieved. And then consciousness alone remains. There is nothing but consciousness. Just you look yesterday, you look yesterday, you can't remember the past nor can you foretell the future. However intellectual one may be, when something goes wrong with his brain, he has, no, he has to consult a psychiatrist or go to an asylum. Mm. One dose of opium is sufficient to make him lose his consciousness. Such are the limitations of intellect and senses. Further, jealousy, anger, prejudice, depression, all these cloud man's vision. If a person is cheerful, everything is beautiful to him. Otherwise, everything is ugly to him. If a person is filled with hatred, everybody becomes an enemy to him. If his mind is filled with love, everybody becomes his friend. Thus, knowledge derived through the mind can never be dependable. This conclusion is very important. Our great master minds have tried to show that anything that we try to perceive is only appearance of a thing and not the essence of a thing. For example, take a piece of cloth. You say it's a piece of cloth. Suppose you remove its warp and woof. 
He removed all the threads. It is no more the cloth that it was formerly. It is now called a heap of threads. Now, again it can be reduced to cotton and cotton again to atoms. So in reality, we are wearing only atoms. <laughs> yeah. Then, are the senses and intellect not useful at all? They are useful, of course, but not to a certain, but they are useful only to a certain extent. Up to a certain stage, intellect is useful, but when that stage is reached, the intellect is no longer useful. On the other hand, it is an obstacle thereafter. It should be dispensed with. Even in Vedanta, which is mainly a process of constant inquiry and analysis, the intellect has to be avoided when one reaches the point of meditation of drawing the mind inward. Masterminds knew that mind was not the essential part of man. And so they gave a kick to the mind and intellect and boldly took a, heap, uh, took a leap into the unknown. They had direct experience of the truth and enjoyed the supreme bliss which they wanted to share with others. So they said, Come ye, O seekers, we will show you the way to eternal PTQ, where there is perennial bliss and lasting peace. So, to believe in their words of experience is not blind faith. That comes under the category of Shraddha. Faith is spirit responding to the spirit. The ultimate existence is to be experienced through constant meditation. The ultimate essence in man responds to the infinite. Faith does not spring from the mind and senses. Faith is the nature of the innermost being of man. Here, faith, I mean the Shraddha, not ordinary faith. Shraddha is a power. It's a great primal power which elevates man and lifts him to the transcendental experience. The supreme experience alone is present. Thus a person enters into the highest state of experience, attains Nirvikalp Samadhi. There is no question of coming back again and again, etc. It is over. The spiritual journey is over and he knows what he is. That means I know who I am. Who is that I? That I is the Atman. Who is that Atman? That Atman is part and parcel of the Paramatma. Finished. Then no more question of uh, birth and death and so on. So the nature of the Supreme is existence. This can be illustrated by an example. You go to a jungle and see a tree there. Suppose a woodcutter cuts the tree, then it is called log. Though the tree has changed its form and name, the existence has not disappeared. It exists in the, nature, in the name and form of the log. Now, if the log is then made into planks of wood, then log is not there, but the planks of wood are, or each plank of wood is there. The existence aspect continues, 
that's a partition number. Existence aspect continuous. Suppose these planks are converted into tables and chairs. Then the planks are not there, but still the tables and chairs are there. If after some years the tables and chairs become useless and are reduced to pieces of wood, then the tables and chairs are not there. If these pieces of wood are burnt, then the ashes remain. The wood now exists as the ashes. And if the ashes are also annihilated, according to the scientists, they still remain as what? As atoms. Atoms. Thus, existence continues. The ultimate truth is existence, eternity. That's the truth. But we are not able to experience the truth with our senses and the mind, for they are limited in the scope. One sees an object at night as long as there is light. But if the light is put off, in spite of his having his eyes opened, he can't see anything. So the eyes depend on the external object for seeing, namely the light. But suppose there is too much light, the eyes cannot see, the eyes will be dazzled or even perpetually blinded by excessive light, as for instance of an arc light. Again, if a curtain hides an object, the eyes cannot perceive it. If a crystal clear glass tumbler he is filled with pure water. From a distance, it cannot be said whether it contains water or not. If you are affected with cold, you can't smell an object. You can't hear a very low sound, and a powerful sound may deafen your ears. When you are absorbed in some thought, you can't hear the external noises. However delicious it may be, a third or fourth cup of milk ceases to be delicious. If the milk was really delicious, it must have been delicious always. Then how is it that a fourth cup of milk is not delicious and a fifth cup causes vomiting? <laughs> so, our senses are limited in their scope. We can't have uniformity of experience through the senses. We cannot remember what all dish. The great intellect Adi Shankara himself has said, has laid down Shraddha as one of the sixfold virtues in Sadhana Chatushtaya, which consists Viveka, first one, discrimination. Second, Vairagya, dispassion. Third, Shat Samadhi Sat Sampati. Shama, Dhamma, Uparati, Titiksha. Shraddha and Samadhan. Here comes the word Shraddha. And finally, Mumukshatva, intense longing for liberation. These are the four virtues which have to be cultivated by the spiritual seeker. That means the spiritual speaker must have all these four. If everything could be understood by analysis and inquiry, then why did he stipulate Shraddha? Without Shraddha, an aspirant cannot practice even Shravana, even hearing. If you don't have Shraddha, you don't care to come. I know, we should have I have got a party to attend upon. Let me go there. So, the was, you, you succumb to your wavering of mind. That means, aspirant cannot practice even Shravana, hearing, without Shraddha. If he has no Shraddha in the teacher, <coughs> if he doubts that what his teacher says may be incorrect, how can you learn anything at all? Nowadays, uh, people have got great passion now, changing their views. <laughs> my own experience.
Shakespeare can sing. One person, one person came to me. Swamiji, will you please reinitiate me? One person reinitiates me. I want to be initiated by Bhashyamji, so will you please initiate me again? No, I can't do that. Why not? Then I didn't want to argue. Then I told, because I had just come in the beginning of the Shikhar Vashama. My first encounter is this one. Then I had to refer, please write to the person in the wrong order. Whatever he says, suppose he says, initiate him, I will initiate him. Then she took a bold step, she wrote a letter. To President Maharaj. And President Maharaj at that time was Bhuteshanji. Immediately she got the reply. Believe, have Shraddha. Have Shraddha is the mantra given by your Guru. As you have mentioned, your Guru was Pashyanaji. Why don't you cultivate Shraddha in the mantra given by him? That Shraddha will take you onward in spiritual path. There is no need for you to change the Guru or to be initiated again. <laughs> and do you know, she showed that letter to me. <laughs> and then, most amusing part is, that letter has come from President Maharaj. She should cherish it with great value, President Maharaj's. And in reply, said, that lady, whom, whose name I don't want to mention, she threw away that letter into the Oh my gosh. So you can imagine what kind of sattva she is having and how can you expect such a person to improve at all in spiritual life and how do you understand, how do you conclude that she has understood spirituality? Zero. Zero. So what I am telling is having sattva Without Shraddha, everything is empty. Please note that point. Empty. Everything goes afterwards negative value only. Yeah, all minus, minus, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 1. <laughs> so, you have to cross the zero to come to positive. <laughs> so, you have to. <laughs> So, that's the way. So, it is said, even in our daily life, Shraddha is indispensable. What to speak of spirituality? Somebody cooks food and we take that food. We do not doubt that the cook might have put some poison in the food. <laughs> We go to a doctor for medicine and take the medicine that he gives without doubting that what he gives might be poison. In the spiritual realms also, the same is the case. There have been sages who have plumbed the depth of truth and given out their experiences. We repose sometimes the words of persons who say that they have visited the moon. Similarly, it is reasonable to repose Shraddha in the words of those who have seen the truth because they say we have experienced the truth. So, you can also experience the truth provided you do what we have done in order to experience the truth. Experiment for yourself and then see whether you attain the same result or not. So, and Brahman used to say to the disciple, Look, you follow strictly what I have told you, all the instructions. Follow this discipline for six months. If you don't find the result, 
Prabhupada is a come and slap my face. What bold statement. So I just so confident that such person passing, following these instructions should definitely have results. The sages give us assurance that we can also experience the highest truth by following the proper self-analysis. In our modern age, Chirakta has given this assurance. He told Swami Vivekananda in the first meeting itself, I have seen God, you can also see God. How nicely he tells. By in that statement, he invoked Shraddha in Swami Vivekananda's heart. From that day onwards, the Shraddha bloomed like anything. And he could not contain it. That is the starting point. In starting itself, he gave a boost. Saint Tulsidha says, the Shraddha is like the handmaid of a queen. If anyone wants to see the queen, Maharani, he cannot be led to the queen by the servants of the palace to the inmost chamber in which the queen is staying. Only up to the gateway to the innermost chamber, others can lead a visitor. Thereafter, one of the handmaids of the queen alone can take the visitor to the queen. All our reasoning, all our theoretical knowledge and so on will take us only up to a certain stage. Beyond that, they cannot help us, but only Shraddha can help us in attaining the supreme experience. So, 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 Shraddha is necessary for all aspirants. Be a Raj Yogi, be a Karma Yogi, be a Bhakti Yogi, be Yogi of any category you want to. But Shraddha is very, very, very important. And Lord Krishna himself has said in the Bhagavad Gita, Shraddha Vaan Yabhate Jnana. Jnana means Supreme, Paramananda, the realization of the truth, that is Jnana, the Supreme wisdom. Shriram said to Mani Malik, you are leading householders' lives. It is necessary for you to live in the company of holy men. First of all, the company of holy men. Then it should be immediately followed by faith, Shraddha, in God. Once Sri Ramachandra was pleased with the prayer of Narada and told him to ask for a boon. Narada prayed for pure love and said further, O Ram, please grant that I may not be deluded by thy world bewitching Maya. Sri Ramachandra said, it's all right but asked for something else. Now that he prayed, I don't want anything else. I pray only for pure love. So, he shut up, prompted him to ask that. Oh, I want love and love alone, nothing else. So, I pray only for pure love. <coughs> pure love. 